it's payday so i'm gonna take you guys with me to pay some bills and do some shopping and don't ask for anything okay you can get something but it has to be something small because santa's coming soon okay nothing expensive have you ever handed somebody $452.15 and felt a little piece of your soul leave your body? I mean, at least, the, at least the shit's paid. At least it's paid. We don't get to worry about it. We're just $452.15 uh, more poor than we were uh, like the four minutes ago. So taking you guys into stores did not work out the way that I wanted it to. It was absolutely nothing but copywritten music everywhere. Fuck you, Ellie Goldie. Just kidding. I'm sure you're a lovely woman. Anyways, I don't know if this is an American thing. I'm trying. I try. I try to remember. I try to remember. A lot of my audience is not from the U.S., but um, at least where I'm from, there's these green glass Christmas trees that were like all over the place. I kind of. I kind of think that they still are. Um, it's just with like old people and the, like people that are into vintage stuff. But they're like glass Christmas trees with glass lights and everything. Um, and they're really cute and they really feel like nostalgic in a way, you know? Well, I found the Halloween version of it today at Aldi. It doesn't have any batteries, but it still has the little tester thing. Look how cute it is. Oh, it's so cute. They only had two and the other one, um, the, the, uh, tester thing was dead, so I couldn't see what it looked like lit up, but, you know, and, and I'm a little disappointed that there's, like, um, you better stop it! I'm a little disappointed that there's, like, glue, like, obvious glue on the pumpkin. Oh. My God. Anyways, but I'll get over it. I'm sure I can put, like, black paint or something on it, so it's not as noticeable. <laughs> It's so fucking cute. I think I only paid like $10 for it too, which is not bad. I have to tell you guys something. It's really gross, but it, it, it does have a point. I promise it does. Yesterday, I got a call from my son's school. Come get him, bitch. He's got pink eye. I was like, what the hell? And she said, oh yeah, he's the third kid that I've had to send home. And the last half hour with it, it's running through his fucking class like a Tomb Raider. So he's been home since yesterday, you know, doing eye drops and just kind of chilling because it's so fucking like contagious. He can't go to school till Monday. But ever since I found out that he has pink eye, both my husband and I have been getting like phantom eye pain. Like I, sw I swear, I swear. It's like, what, what's it called? It's like placebo. It's like, it's like I'm getting in my own head telling myself that I have pink eye. All day yesterday, I was like, I, I swear there's like, I swear it's watering. I swear it's gooey. I swear this, I swear that nothing's happened. I was terrified to go to sleep last night because I thought I was going to wake up in my eye. This eye was going to be matted shut. I had like absolutely convinced myself that I had pink eye. So what the fuck was the point in that story? Other than to gross you out. Because we all know that uh, pink eye comes from getting shit particles in your eye. And if you don't know now, you know. <laughs> I am terrified of wearing eye makeup because I'm afraid that I either have it and it's just not bad yet. And I feel like it would be at this point. If, if I had it, it would be at this point wouldn't it i'm terrified i have it and i don't know it or i'm going to get it and then have to throw away everything that touched my eye and i just don't have the money for that but i'm really upset about it because i can't i can't put any makeup on i'm scared to and i i know <laughs> it's in my head i know it's in my head i know it's me psyching myself out but my eyeball really does hurt i swear it does I swear to it's been over 24 hours. It's been over 24 hours. Wouldn't I know? Wouldn't I know at this point? Or am I just paranoid? But I wanted to show you guys some makeup that I got at Walmart. And uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I was only able to go into the makeup section and get what I needed to get and get the fuck out. I needed all kinds of shit and I couldn't stay and get it because I started to have a panic attack. I feel like when I go in places like that without my husband or one of my kids, I have like a panic attack. I have really bad agoraphobia, which agoraphobia is not fear of leaving your house. It's fear of social situations. And I kind of, I kind of look at my husband and I kind of look at my kids like they're just like, if they're with me, people will leave me alone, even though that's not true. But I believe that it is. So leave me alone. But I wanted to show you some of the makeup that I got. And 
uh, some press-ons that I got. I got these. They're not my favorite things that I've ever seen, um, just because I don't like the little accent nails, but I feel really good about buying them because now these bitches are starting to fall off. This literally fell off right before I hit record. I might end up I might end up uh, painting that black because I'm not I'm not a big fan of like the sparkly accent nails. I mean, a couple of years ago I was, but now I'm not. And then I finally found my eyeliner, my my real good eyeliner, because you know how I've been bitching and complaining and whining like I love to do for the last several videos that I accidentally picked up the wrong one. Well, I finally found the right one, and now I think I have pink eyes, so I can't use it. But anyways, moving on. I also went ahead and bought some foundation that I hope is going to match me because um, I was using 320 which is natural tan and it was not worth it was just so in your face not the right color um, and sometimes I like to do that on purpose but when I'm wearing this I'm not doing that on purpose so I went ahead and I went up a shade to try to see if this will work because I went up two shades before and it was too dark and I'm not trying to do that either <laughs> why was my face so serious I don't know I went ahead and picked up some eyelashes too and to be perfectly honest i feel like i got really lucky on these because there was like an employee in the eyelash aisle and i felt like they were kind of rushing me a little bit and i was like i y'all got a whole wall of this shit, and i can't really look at what you what you have going on here when i feel like you're trying to tell me to get the fuck out of the way <laughs> but i grabbed some. i think i did pretty good though for not really being able to look i went ahead and got some new wet and wild highlighter highlighter powder i hope that it works honestly the other day when i did my makeup on ca on camera it made me want to start using highlighter a little bit here and there and then i picked up some of the uh wet and wild midnight sky uh black lipstick i have wet and wild black lip gloss but i don't have any of their black lipstick uh, this is its limited edition, probably for Halloween, but I'm going to give it a fucking try because I have an obsession with trying various different drugstore black lipsticks. I don't know why. Okay, so my uh, Walmart recently started selling LA Girl, which is like one of the cheapest makeup brands there possibly could be. And mostly you, you see them at like dollar stores in the US, like uh, Dollar General, Family Dollar, places like that. Well, we got them there. I think I already said that. And these were $1.98 a piece. My expectations for them are in hell, especially this one, because these types of colors are so hard to get right, even on expensive, like nice palettes. So we'll see. And this is like the cheapest. This, this feels like play makeup. This feels like play makeup, but they were one, $1.98, I think, a piece. So if something happens and they're absolutely terrible and I can't like wet my brush and foil them and all that happy horse shit, I may just end up giving it to my niece because, you know, she's like two and doesn't care. But we'll try them though. We'll try them uh, when I feel like my eyeball isn't going to fall out of my head. I swear it's in my head. I swear it's in my head. I swear I'm psyching myself out. It's in my head. I got my nails done and I didn't have to worry about the sparkly silver ones. And also I have been watching hours and hours and hours like over the course of like the last two weeks of just Game of Thrones lore. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, uh, right now I'm right now I'm watching a video about Cersei Lannister that is over an hour long. <laughs> Look at the pollution. It's beautiful. <laughs> I got batteries for my little tree. Actually went for Drano and left with everything but Drano. But to be fair, they didn't have any. So I was just watching a new Tammy Lemon weight loss video. And I just want to talk about something. Um, I, w I wouldn't say that I have opened up to you guys about my disordered eating, but I have acknowledged it with you guys. I've been like, yes, I do have a bed, a binge eating disorder. Um, and I watch a lot of like recovery YouTubers and Tammy Lemon is somebody that I, I adore her so much. She's so comforting. Every time I see her pop up on my notifications, I get excited. And one thing that I really, really, really love about her is that she doesn't lie. She doesn't lie. Even when she fucks up, even when she's having a bad day, she doesn't lie about it. 
and she is seeking professional help and she does struggle a lot with not not just you know the disordered eating but also just her mental health she struggles a lot with like depression and things like that and she doesn't lie about it she tells her audience all about it and over the last couple of months tammy's subs have doubled if not tripled and i have noticed that her comment sections have become so fucking toxic and why does this per why does this pertain to me um I may, I'm, I'm like adding this into my vlog 50% because I'm just ranting because I'm pissed and 50% because I have thought about creating a YouTube channel where I just talk about whether I'm like my healing process, healing my body, healing my mind of just trauma and all the bullshit that I've put it through and things of, of, of you know, that sort. But what makes me angry, what pisses me off is Tammy is receiving professional help. She is receiving professional help. And one thing that I absolutely love about her is she doesn't lie. No matter how good or how bad her day went, it doesn't matter if she ate 13,000 calories or if she stayed within her budget, she tells you. And I feel like the more attention that she's getting, the more negative her comment section is becoming. And it's people that are just, they think they know better than her psychiatrist. They think that they know better than her nutritionist. And they think that they know better than her. And what kills me is like, they'll be like, you know, you know what you should try doing? You should try eating smaller portion sizes. You think she doesn't know that? You think that she doesn't know that? And the thing with disordered eating is that you have to heal your mind and then your body will follow, okay? Um, I feel like the more attention that she's getting from people like Alex, Alex is shook, the more negative audience is coming in because he makes videos about people like Foodie Beauty and Amber Lynn Reed. And I, that is the type of audience that he attracts. So they're going to her with that same energy and she does not deserve it. She does not deserve it. So I'm like, okay, so if I made a YouTube channel and I opened up about my, my issues with food and body image and mental illness and, and all that, I would have the same, I, the same thing would eventually happen to me. Once I hit so many subscribers, the same fucking thing would happen to me. And I don't think that I can handle that. And quite frankly, I don't think that she deserves it. She never lies to her audience. She never hides shit. She made a video about her struggles of being 450 pounds and just what it does to her body and the things that she can and cannot do because of it. And she was so open and so honest and so raw in it. And I, I don't think that we should ever look at her and say, you're a bad person for saying that because it is her reality. Not only that, I feel like when you're sitting, when you're sitting in her comment section, um, telling her, I, I think you should eat this instead of this. And I think that you, you need smaller portion sizes. Like she doesn't know this. Like she doesn't know this. The thing that, thing that you don't understand about big girls is most of us have been dieting most of our lives. Okay, we know how to lose weight. It's just really hard to do. And I've lost 63 pounds and it has been fucking hard. It is one of the hardest fucking things I've ever done in my life. But listen, I feel like when people get that attitude, when people behave that way, when they get in people's comment sections and they tell them, you know, they, they act like they know better than you know the professional help that they're receiving and all that and all the work that they have done because the thing with with eds is you have to spend the rest of your fucking life trying to stay ahead of them they there's something that don't really ever go away they just kind of they kind of what is it what is it called you you go and it kind of goes into a remission it just lies dormant in the back of your fucking brain and and waits for an opportunity to pass to to, to pop back up and you have to spend the rest of your life keeping ahead of it but i feel like all that that type of shit in her comments is going to do is push her to not feeling comfortable with being honest and being open. It, it, all it's going to do is push her to being like, okay, I can't tell them when I binge and eat 13, 14,000 calories. So why say it at all? Like, do you think, do you think that you're going to say something to her? That's going to be like her light bulb moment. Like, oh my God, I should eat smaller portions. No, I, I, I never thought of that. I never thought of that. 
and, and, it, and it's just reading the comments in her comment section and she is so sweet and so good and just so comforting and just lovely she's lovely and seeing the negativity in her comments makes me never want to open up online and i thought about making a completely separate channel for it because i know that that type of stuff can be triggering and I feel like I, I wouldn't be able to handle that. I'd be like, shut the fuck up, you know? I don't know. I don't know. It was really bothering me.